In this lesson, we'll learn about the principle of timing and spacing. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is one of the 12 principles of animation that was established by Disney animators back in the early days of traditional animation. Two of these animators, by the names of Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston, wrote an outstanding book called The Illusion of Life, Disney Animation. And it's in this book that they not only cover these 12 principles that these Disney animators established back in the, those early days, but also a plethora of very useful information that any animator, whether they're seasoned or just starting out, will find extremely beneficial to the craft of animation. So for this timing and spacing um, principle, we're going to be doing just a good old ball bounce to really get this concept across. So I've got a group here titled Ball Bounce. We have one layer here for all of our drawings for the ball. Another layer here just for our ground plane. And then another layer here that I've titled Arcs. As we draw these, these different drawings for this ball, we don't want them to be zigzagged and all over the place. You want to have um, a specific path that it's following. This is going to allow it to feel very natural, just as if you took a rubber ball and threw it across the ground. It's not going to zigzag all over the place um, as it's bouncing, unless unless it's a, a the ground plane is uneven or has different objects on it that are causing it to move in different directions. But if it's just a flat ground plane, you're probably going to get a bounce that's kind of arcing like this, and those arcs will decrease and get smaller and smaller over time. So you want something like this, and if you're doing this example, um, even on using um, traditional methods that um, we're using pencil and paper, you want to kind of sketch out this so that you can kind of have an idea of where to put those drawings. So the fewer drawings you have of this ball, right, the faster the animation is going to be. It's just less information that our eye has to process, okay? So it's going to zip by. It's going to be faster and more crisp. Now, the more drawings you have, the slower it's going to be, okay? So ideally, you want to have variety of the two. That's going to give you something that's more interesting and more believable. So as we approach the apex of this arc, okay, we want the spacing to become um, more decreased. We want the spacing to be closer and closer together. And so by having your onion skinning on, which is what we have right here, by clicking on that, or you can click right there, we're able to see the previous drawing. And so as I get closer to the top of this arc, I'm reducing the spacing. You can see I'm kind of coming further into that previous drawing each time to really hold this ball and kind of slow it down as it approaches the top of this arc. Okay, and this is going to give us a sense of gravity in acting upon this ball. Now you may notice, if you come back to this lesson after having watched other lessons in this course, that we kind of sprinkled in some other principles of these 12 into this lesson. We'll kind of talk more about squash and stretch, slow in, slow out, that sort of thing. So if I, as I reach the top of this arc, you know, I've, I've really reduced that spacing quite a bit, but now we're getting ready to come back down it. The ball is um, gone as high as it can at the for this action here, and gravity is going to pull it back down to Earth. And so, as a result, that spacing is going to start to increase more and more. And so you can see how I'm increasing that space in between each drawing. All right, and then we're going to have the ball hit hit the ground. I'm, um, I'm sprinkling in a little bit of squash and stretch, uh, which we'll talk about later on. So the ball is going to hit the ground, and then it's going to start to go back up on that next arc. And you notice how I drew this arc to be a little bit shorter in height, because if this ball were to continue bouncing on, it's eventually going to come to a stop, a stop, and so those arcs would be shorter and shorter. So basically, same thing as before, as we start to reach the apex of this arc, I'm going to reduce the spacing, okay?
Now we're getting ready to come back down. And we can go ahead and stop it right there. And so if you take this little blue little playhead right here, this little thing on top of your playhead, little blue arm, and if you extend that all the way out, you can see all of our timing and spacing that we have here. Okay, So you can see how we reduce the spacing um, as we got to the top of that arc, and then as it starts to come back down, you can see how I increase the spacing. Okay, If we go ahead and click play, we can see what that looks like. Now, uh, what you would really want to do is shoot some reference video. Get like a rubber ball or a ping pong ball or a golf ball um, or any kind of ball because they're all going to bounce different based off of their, their weight, um, sometimes their material. There's a lot of other factors um, that play into that. They're each going to bounce differently, and so your spacing is going to be different. That's going to allow you to really determine the, the weight of the ball. Okay? So just kind of playing that. And so now you could come back in here and you could really adjust any of these um, to really fine tune it based off of what type of ball um, you want this to be. Now, if you want to adjust the timing even further, right now everything is done on ones, okay? Now, most animation is done on twos, basically where each one of these drawings is held for two frames. Right now, everything's on one frame. So you could hold down Shift, select all of these, right-click, go to Exposure. You can go to Set Exposure to Two. So each one of these drawings is now held for two frames. So that affects the timing. You can see what a difference that made. And, of course, the arc... The arcs and the ground plane are disappearing because I don't have those exposures extended out. But you can see how the ball is moving a lot more slowly, okay? So a lot of traditional animation is done on twos. However, um, if you're dealing with camera movement, stuff like that, or even sometimes some dialogue, um, you may work on ones. I'll go ahead and just switch this back to one. And again, you can kind of see what we're doing here. So how you space these drawings out again uh, makes a big difference in how that ball is going to be interp interpreted visually by your eyes over time. Okay, that spacing um, affects the 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 timing. Okay, and as if you recall, as I mentioned just moments ago, the number of drawings used. Um, in, in, in any kind of movement or action like this determines that amount of time that action will take on screen. Let's go ahead and hide the visibility of this group. I've got another group here titled Beach Ball. Okay, I'm going to turn on the visibility of that. So in this case, let's say you want to adjust your timing and spacing, but you just have one drawing that you're going to be moving using some other tools here in Toon Boom. Okay. So we've got a peg for this beach ball. I'm going to be using this translate tool right here to move this beach ball. And if you don't see this toolbar, this is our advanced animation toolbar. If you don't see it, come up to Windows, Toolbars, and just make sure you check mark Advanced Animation right there, and you'll see that. Okay. So let's go ahead and take our little bracket right here for our scene, our frame range, uh, to over here to, say, 30. I've already got a keyframe in place right here um, for our beach ball, basically recording its um, place right here um, in space. And so what I want to do is copy that keyframe. I'm just going to go ahead and hit Control C, and we'll come over here to frame 30. I'll hit Control V and paste it. And I'm planning to loop this animation so we can really get a sense of the ball bounce, okay, since we're just going to be bouncing it up and down. So we have our start and end uh, positions for this ball, they're the same. I'll come out here to say, oh, frame 15 or, or 16. And let's go ahead and with our translate tool from our advanced animation toolbar, let's go ahead and place our ball right here on this little ground plane. Okay, and that's that layer right there. Okay. So now if I go ahead and click play, you can see the interpolation that's taking place in between these keyframes, but it feels very linear, robotic, unnatural. That's not how a ball bounces. We don't have a sense of gravity that's being enacted upon this ball. So how can we 
fix that? How can we achieve the same results or the relatively the same results that we just did when we were drawing out that other ball um, frame by frame? Well, what we can do, I'll go ahead and kind of reduce this while I'm at it. What we can do is you want to go into the peg properties by clicking that little plus right there and expanding it. And we're going to adjust the velocity. Okay, so double click on that. This takes us into our velocity editor, and we can see those keyframes that we've set right there. So um, over here is our values, and across here is basically the frame, the frames, okay, our frame range. If you ever worked in any kind of 3D applications and have used any of their respective graph editors, this will be uh, perhaps very familiar to you, this, this overall editor that we have here. So what I want to do is I'm going to select that first keyframe, and when you select a keyframe, you can see the little bezier handles that it has. And so I want to go ahead and change the overall curve that we have here so that it's not completely straight and linear, which was yielding us the results that we saw that felt very robotic. So I'm basically pulling that out, and you're basically extending that value out just a little bit more right there. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. And for this middle keyframe, we want to kind of adjust it as well. And so what I want is kind of a curve, kind of like this, okay? Let's go ahead and click play. And now that starts to feel much more natural. It feels like an object that has gravity pulling it down. And it reaches that apex point where it starts to slow down, okay? Let's turn on um, our onion skinning. And so now you can see as it reaches the top right there, you can see how the spacing becomes closer and closer together. But as, as it comes back down, it becomes further and further apart. Now I do see, even having done this right here, I do see an opportunity to push this just a little bit further, okay, to make that impact a little bit stronger. So right there, it feels like the spacing is still a little bit too uniform before it hits the ground. So what I might do is on the frame before, okay, I'll go ahead and pull that up just a little bit more. And so now we can see that there's a bigger jump. Okay. So you can kind of see that. I'm just kind of pulling that blue bracket in there a little bit more so you can kind of see that difference. So now if we go ahead and click play, we can see that it has just a little bit more of a stronger impact. It doesn't feel as floaty. Okay. Now again, uh, you know, this is a beach ball, so probably what you would want to do is shoot some reference of an actual beach ball and kind of, ex kind of study it um, and examine it and break it down, and that'll really help you kind of figure out the overall um, adjustments that you want to make here in your velocity editor. But you can see how, I'll go ahead and hit stop that right there. We can still come in here and make further uh, adjustments. Just kind of tweaking that curve overall. So you can see how I kind of slowed it down even more as it comes to the top. And that's probably a little bit too unnatural, but you start to kind of get the idea. So just kind of tweaking that, kind of pulling it back where it was. So this is really cool. This is these are this is why you would want to really use Toon Boom uh, doing stuff like this. You have some awesome tools where you can take drawings like this and basically uh, move them around, and you can adjust their their spacing and their timing um, using these types of tools. Okay, so hopefully you found this information useful and are able to implement it um, in your own animations. Again, by having timing allows you to just have something, have an animation that will have just a lot more um, mood and emotion um, implemented. When you do this with characters, um, you can also have um, a reaction to other characters in a situation be more effective as well by having timing and spacing um, put into account.